Welcome back to the garage. Today I've got something a little bit different. Sort of different, it's kind of the same, but I went out on my local marketplace and found this. This kind of stuff doesn't actually pop up on my local marketplace very much, if ever. So it was kind of neat. Pretty sure it's a 2A grill. Kind of neat that it was also originally Luzon Red. This is a few hints of the paint. But uh, it's not in terrible shape, but also not in great shape. It's a little bit wavy along the bottom here. It's gonna need some hammering to straighten that out. And the whole thing is actually bent in the middle. So it was destined to be a wall hanger anyways. I guess uh, they also just snapped off every bolt instead of hitting it with penetrating oil and trying to remove it. And who knows, you know, how long ago that was. And originally I thought these were some kind of aftermarket light, but no, these are just the, the factory uh, metal bezels just put on upside down. So at least I have those, that saves me a little bit. And I've got sockets, but they're incomplete. So I'll have to figure out something to do when wiring it up. Also, the uh, good people at the CJ2A page were able to help me come up with some headlight buckets for it. I had one of my original rings off this Jeep and it is passable. Fortunately, this one included the retainer ring, though it's, um, it's not something that you'd put back on a, a regular Jeep unless you had to, given all the rust damage. And this one's pretty good. Uh, you know, a few holes in it, but uh, it also came with a retaining ring and he was nice enough to throw in another uh, bezel. And this is better than the other original one I had that was completely rusted out in the bottom. So that was very, very good to have. Then I've also got my original parking light covers here. Uh, this is after extensively cleaning them up and making them actually translucent again. But, um, they're never going to be clear. So I replaced those already. And these will get a second life. All this will get a second life as a wall hanger. So, let's see what it'll take to straighten this guy up just a little bit. Get it bent back in the shape just enough to hang on the wall and maybe light up. Just as a nice piece of decoration. There's actually more lose on red under there than I thought. It's taking a little bit of fight to get these off, but remarkably, they're coming loose. Here's another chapter of this thing's story. Lose on red to blue, to white, to black, to rust. I was expecting this to just be gone after all that time, but there's still some chrome on there. Got my 4.0 steel wool. I wonder if that'll just come out. This ring, similarly in awesome shape. Let's go polish it up too. Hey, these might end up being too nice for a wall hanger. If you told me that that was hiding underneath that rusty grill, I would have been skeptical. I was expecting to wire wheel this, get all the rust off of it, and then maybe, uh, Sandblast it and wire wheel it again, but no, that's better than what's on the front of the Jeep. Not bad for just sitting in someone's backyard for a while. I'd hoped I could save the light sockets, but there's really not much there to save.
Eh, better. Well, it's straight, but the sides aren't. Better-ish, maybe. Got that last bit massaged a little bit. Straighten that out, best as you can expect. I mean, really, this grill could go on someone's Jeep if all these snapped off bolts were loosened up and taken out of these captive nuts. It's really, you know, better than some. We're getting there, close to passable. This one's a little low, it's a little high, but the whole thing is, you know, kind of rounded. Bump this one in a little bit and probably call it good. Still just a little bit of tension in this thing that I can't quite get to relieve. That's actually doing it. I... Yeah, handy having that footman loop there on the front to give me some, something to pivot on. I don't know how much of that's gonna come over the camera. Probably not as much as I'd like. But that passes the quick, the quick glance test. Pull this one out a little bit. Got these two back in a little bit. Those are just wherever they are. I think it's time to give this thing a quick bath. Okay, that actually looks worse now. But at least the dust is off it. So I mentioned earlier in the video that I do want to make this grill light up optionally. So I've got this... That's a bit rusty than I thought. Wow. Whew. So I've got this rusty headlight bucket and I went out on Amazon and got the most average looking replacement. One of these. This is a seven inch sealed lamp replacement and it allows you to put an H4 or 9003, I think those are interchangeable, lamp in one of these vintage Jeeps. And that should just center yep, right there. Retaining ring works the same. Simple as that. And then the trim ring will cover all the ugly. So I've got two of these and I should be able to find a 12 volt setup somehow. I'll, I'll figure that one out a little bit later. Also coming from Amazon, I have, let's just face it, there are some no-name brands out there that look like someone just smashed their face against a keyboard to come up with a brand name. You guys have all seen them. I got the most average to low rated, dimmest LEDs I could find, and they should be arriving later today for these. Now that it's all dried out, it's actually not as straight as I thought it was. Top straight, but uh, down here on this bottom corner, on both of them actually, not so much. You can, you can see the crease right here. It's like someone was parting out an old Jeep. They couldn't get the grill off, so they, they cut some of these off the side, but they forgot these bottom ones. So they were probably just pulling on the thing, trying to rip it off. And then they had to cut these big ones off. So that's why this thing got torn up so bad. Huh, so I don't think there's a lot I can do about that. I might smack on it with a hammer just a little bit, but I think we'll move forward. All right, now we're at the kitchen table to play with some electricity. So I've got my headlight buckets here. This one doesn't have a pigtail, but of course,
course, Amazon has solved that problem for me. This one does, but I don't know how good the wiring is because it is original, so we'll see. This one's the crispy one, and this entire bottom part is uh, kind of collapsing as soon as I touch it, so I have to be careful with that. These are the LED bulbs I've picked up. No affiliation or anything. No other reason other than that they were cheap and meh, okay rated. Standard looking LED bulb. I don't know that this is going to work, but we'll see. I've also, for testing purposes, I had this laying around in my scrap pile, but it's a 12 volt, four amp power brick. So I think that'll be enough. Let's see if I can even get this thing on here. Now we'll strip some wire back. And then now let's see if there's enough bare metal on this to make this work. Now with some wire stripped out, I don't know which one was regular and which one's high beam, but the outside will be ground. And if there's enough of a connection here, basically the funny part is I'm having trouble finding enough metal to ground to, but let's try the screw here. There we go. Path of least resistance. So that's a bit, um, a little bit brighter than I expected, but it's LED, so that looks to be a regular beam. And this one, that looks to be a high beam. So for reference, we probably won't be hooking up the high beams because that's gonna be bright enough on its own. So here's about how these will look with the included rubber boot and the newer style connector. Yeah, that's a bit bright, isn't it? Now, nothing against this old six volt stuff, you know, it worked, but that's like 75 years old. So um, I had the technology. I'm gonna just build myself a quick harness for this. With everything nice and shrink wrapped, um, I've actually gone ahead and made a, an actual ground wire because I don't know that these screws and this grounded against the grill will actually provide enough ground potential for it to work. So we're just gonna make sure of that. And totally unnecessarily, I'm gonna go ahead and add some grommets to these because since I'm doing electrical stuff, I mean, why not? One of those finally grounded down. Let's go ahead and install the light. Seems the top just so it goes this way. I am so thankful that both of the people who provided me with these spare headlight buckets for this project were kind enough to include complete ones. This includes a retaining ring and these three tiny screws that hold said retaining ring. That really made this project possible. The 
the rubber boot makes it very, very difficult for this thing to squish down. But it does fit. premature for this it really just completes the look now to do that for the other one this is not a great or perfectly safe test but this should get the proof of concept to make sure these both work And they do. I don't know if this setup is quite four amps of total draw. I'm gonna have to do some math on that, but that's at least a good proof of concept. This can work. Now I'm gonna just quickly throw these together. don't have the right attaching hardware, but I'd like to at least have something because in a previous revision of this project, I might have accidentally dropped one of these and ended up wasting 20 bucks, whatever those were. There's just something about it when it's when it's just an empty grill, no headlight buckets, and you put it up on the shop wall. It's like hanging a skull on the wall. But if you give it its eyes back, put those trim rings on and everything, suddenly it's alive again, you know? That's my take on it at least. like that. It's got some life in it. Oh, but wow, those beams are out of adjustment. You can see the ceiling right now. Maybe that'll come later. Unfortunately, I don't have new light sockets for these yet, but considering this thing was in someone's backyard not too long ago, I'm putting it together with spare parts of whatever I have laying around. I think it actually is turning out okay. Hmm. Well, now, halfway expectedly, the patina has changed. These are too shiny and nice for this rusty old grill. So I don't know what to do about that. I could sand this down and prime it and paint it, make it kind of pretty, or I can just leave it as is. Not sure yet, maybe we'll just leave it as is. So it's a few days later, I went shopping and these have arrived. I've got some new sockets for a number 57 lamp. Pretty simple, straightforward, and that should get me the parking lights. I also went out and got a little bit stronger of a power adapter. This one is 12 volt 5 amp output and uh, has this little add-on here. It's more for like LED strips or a camera system but this will give me something to get power to in a much more safe method. So let's get this all figured out. 
factory ones kind of just sat in here but they had a little indent on them these don't have the indent it's funny because my Jeep has a grill that has these little notches rusted away so something like this would just sit right where it needs to it took a little work but I had to squish this in my bench vise make it kind of oval shaped so that it would fit kind of like it needs to and still retain the lamp like it's supposed to and now as a quick test these number 57 sockets here they ground through the frame there's no ground wire for it so as a quick test let's see if there's enough ground potential through the grill and everything that's bolted together for this to work well as long as i'm careful with the connection it looks like i may actually have a good enough ground there i don't have gaskets for these but i've got the originals off the jeep so i'll actually use gaskets Let's finalize the wiring. With all this heat shrinked, let's get this ground wire set up. Well, that took longer than expected, but it's all bundled up. Kind of wish I had the factory loops here, but they've rusted away. But it's all nice and neat, packaged up into this. Let's see if it actually turns on and works as expected. Let's try that again after a quick wiring revision. I had one strand, just one strand, that was shorting things out. This should actually work this time. There we go. It's not gonna show up on camera, but this is bright. This is really bright. This may have not just become a wall hanger, but a, an auxiliary floor lamp. We'll see. And there's the finished product. I may have overdone it on the LEDs. I wanted a lower amperage draw, but the, um, the wattage ended up being a little too much, perhaps. But it functions as I intended. If I switch to incandescent lamps, I know it'll draw way more amps just because they're incandescent, but I may have to come up with a different solution because right now it's more of a spotlight than anything. I don't know what happened to the audio for this clip, but the gist of it is that the one on the right is the ones I had before, the one on the left is what I'm switching to now. Um, because it really helps if you read the specifications for comprehension. So the one on the right was actually meant more for like a motorcycle headlight, and it's 3000 lumens. But the one on the left is actually meant for a day running light, and it's something like 300 30 lumens I think so that's a 90% reduction in brightness and if I, as I pan up to the ceiling here you see the cutoff on the right side that's that's a headlight bulb it's that's what it's meant to do but the one on the left is way more diffused and dim and that suits the needs of this much much better and I pan back down the GoPro doesn't dim properly to really show this but the one on the left is way way dimmer and with both now swapped out much, much dimmer. That'll do. And there we have it. A little bit of bailing wire to hang it up. I might tint the headlights or come up with a different LED solution, but I think it looks pretty good.
Thanks for watching.